Hi everyone, this is Simcoe White Hovers from Firefly Sci. Usually we make you videos about cuvettes and calibration standards, but we do manufacture another product, this little guy right here, which is called a flow cell or a flow cytometry cell. In this video we're going to take a look at flow cells, how they're made, and what they're used for. So, let's get started. What is a flow cell? Let's start by talking about what a flow cell is. A flow cell, aka a flow through cell, or flow channel cell, or a flow cytometry cell, is any type of cuvette that has an inlet and an outlet. In other words, a sample is able to flow in one part of the cell and out another part. This allows a steady flow of sample to be analyzed rather than removing the cuvette and having to refill it. The inlet and outlet tubes can be in differing locations. Some cells have the inlet and outlet tube on the top of the cuvette, like we see right here. Some have the inlet and outlet tubes on the face of the cuvette. This flow cell we see here has detachable inlet and outlet tubes, or in this case it's M6 connectors, which screw into these ports right here. And most flow cells have an inlet and outlet on the top and bottom, like this cell that we see here. This design is most popular since it allows a sample to easily flow through the cell in a smooth, turbulence-free flow. The main focus of this video will be on these little flow cells that we manufacture. This flow cell is an ultra-micro flow cell, and the channel sizes ranges from 50 microns up to 1 to 2 millimeters. Just to compare, here's the flow cell. And here's that cuvette we were looking at earlier before, next to each other. See how much bigger the cuvette is next to that tiny little flow cell. These flow cells have a variety of applications and are used in the following machines. Flow cytometers, HPLC detectors, hematology analyzers, particle counters, and particle sizers. How is it made? Even though the cell looks like it is a solid block of quartz with a square hole in it, these flow channel cells are actually made from four pieces of quartz that are fused together. Extreme precision is needed to make these flow cells correctly. The inner flow channel and the outer walls must be optically clear. All flow cells have all four walls polished. This is to allow all the different types of optics, cameras, and detectors to be able to see the sample flowing in the cell. The optical faces must be extremely flat because of a lot of the time there are multiple optics that are looking at the flow cell from all different sides. What are some standard designs? This is what a basic flow cell looks like. All flow cells are based off this basic design. You can see the tiny channel in this flow cell right here, right down the middle there. This design is a good starting point for people that need an ultra micro flow cell, and we can make many different modifications to this design. Some example, here are some examples of the modifications. This one here has an inlet cone right on the top. It also has a special adapter here for easily pushing on tubing on the bottom. This one is a combination of clear and black quartz. The black quartz has masking properties to help improve transmission. This flow cell here has a mirror coating on the back. Some flow cells have frosted ends and some flow cells have the ends polished. Let me find a polished end one to show. There it is. This flow cell here has polished ends. So modifications we can make to flow cells are inlet cones, inlet and outlet cones, custom shapes, beveled edges, rounded ends for easy tubing hookup, and designs with clear and black quartz. 
What is hydrodynamic focusing? Hydrodynamic focusing is a technique that enables users of a flow cytometry cell to gauge the size of particles in the flow channel, whether they be blood cells, virus, or bacteria. A typical flow channel will be something as large as 2 to 3 millimeters in diameter, all the way down to a minuscule 50 microns. As the particles enter the chamber, they will typically pass through a laser beam, which causes a temporary disruptions in the optics. The size and nature of these disruptions or what causes an instrument to be able to measure the particle size. The trick is to get all the cells to line up single file like a conga line so that they can be interrogated one at a time. This is where the principle of hydrodynamic focusing comes into play. Hydrodynamic focusing enables the flow channel to be coated by fluid, also referred to as sheath, creating a wall through which the sample can pass undisturbed. Essentially, a sandwich is created by the two walls of the sheath fluid and the sample core flowing on the inside. The sheath fluid runs at flow speeds, which ensures minimal disruption between the two sides of the fluid. The main goal here is to prevent the two walls from mixing and thus disrupting the particle flow. This is also called laminar flow. Often saline solutions are deployed for this. Another trick that can be deployed in hydrodynamic focusing is a cone which even further focuses the flow stream into a narrow three-layer sheath slash sample sandwich. By manipulating the flow rates of the sheath, the core sample stream can be even further focused through the flow channel. It's important that the cone not have rough ridges in order that it can reduce any turbulence that might disturb the sheath layers or core stream. If you have any questions about flow cytometry cells, please send us an email at info at fireflyside.com. Uh, please give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.